Right, what I got for my birthday. If you guessed existential dread and a small life crisis, you would be correct. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. How's it going? Hope you're doing really well. Hope life is treating you well. I hope luck is on your side. I hope you're discovering wild and wonderful new adventures and all the other good stuff. So as 31st birthdays go, 111st birthdays, feels like it. It was a pretty great one. I had such a lovely, amazing day, really. Um, actually, before I start talking about birthday stuff, while I'm remembering this, because I want to make sure that I don't forget to mention this, um, a few of you particularly eagle-eyed folks out there noticed in my last video, but if you haven't already clocked it, let me just point you in the direction of my amazing new channel art. So I reached out to one of my favourite illustrators. Her name is Charlotte, otherwise known as Honey Plum Paper, and she actually did um, an illustration of me um, and tagged me in it on Instagram. So I reached out to her and sent her the vaguest brief of all time. I was like, it probably needs to be warm toned and include some books and my cat and maybe some pumpkins. And she was like, okay, cool, got it. Somehow from literally the world's worst instructions, she managed to create the most beautiful channel art for me. So if you head over to my channel page, you'll be able to see the banner at the top that she created. And then if you hang around until the very end of this video, you will also see the new end screen that she created for me. And it was just amazing to see it come to life. She's so creative and talented and I could not love it more. She's gonna be linked in the description box down below. So I highly recommend you head over and give her a like on Instagram, check out her work, and you will be as amazed as I was. And it turns out that it only takes me nearly a decade to be professional enough to have channel art. Doing well. <laughs> okay, now that I've remembered to mention that, um, let's talk about birthday. It was the most amazing day. My birthday is actually the 23rd of April. Big Taurus energy around these parts. And I was double blessed this year because my birthday fell on a Saturday this year, which I feel like never ever happens for me. So it was a real treat. And I guess I'll start there actually because a couple of the gifts that Adam got me, um, I don't have things to show you, but I can just tell you all about them. He brought me surprise tickets for that night, for the night of my birthday to go and see Matilda. It's been kind of top of my list of shows that I wanna see for a very, very long time. And I must have mentioned it a few times because clearly he took the hint. <laughs> I actually didn't really know what to expect from it either. I was, for some reason, I was kind of expecting it to be more like the movie, like the iconic, I think it's probably like 1995, that film. I went to the cinema to see that and loved it as soon as I saw it at the cinema and I've now seen it probably 20,000 times. <laughs> Wormwood, sell me a lemon. But the musical is actually so much more like the book. It, it's, it's really hard to explain. When I've described how it was to friends and to my mum and stuff, I've said that it was like seeing Quentin Blake illustrations come to life and put into music. Like it was just so quirky and fun and clever and funny. It was so, so funny. Seeing Miss Trunchbull ride a scooter. So that was my main present from Adam, a real kind of bucket list show for me. Um, as you'll, There's actually a bit of a theme to this birthday. For my 31st birthday, there was a strong Matilda theme going on actually, which I don't think was intentional. <laughs> Matilda is a very, very special one to me. Oh, I forgot to tell you as well how he like told me that we were going in my birthday card that he gave me he wrote that i should go to the google home in the kitchen and ask for lucy's birthday playlist and it started playing itty bitty pretty one and send me on my way that was definitely top marks for adam's creativity this year i was just like couldn't stop smiling but i will now dive in to show you the wonderful presents that I got. When I say I've never seen a pile of things that sums up my personality <laughs> quite as accurately as these do, clearly my friends and family, maybe I need to mix things up a bit. Maybe I need some wild new interests that no one expects of me. I think I'll start with the other couple of presents that I got from Adam um, because he also he wants to give me a couple of little things to unwrap, I think. This is gonna need some explanation. So this might not look very much, but I honestly like, nearly shed a tear when I opened this because it's one of the most thoughtful gifts 
I think I've ever had. And this might just look like a tiny clock, but this is actually a clock that is meant to use with the Pomodoro method. And if you have never heard of that, it's basically kind of like a concentration method to increase your productivity and to really kind of focus your mind and your brain and see kind of really good results with your concentration. And I'm currently doing a bit of writing at the moment, um, that's something that I'm kind of exploring and dabbling in and something that I'm really, really enjoying and that's taking up uh, a lot of my spare time. So Adam thought that trying the Pomodoro method and having a separate little clock to use for it would be really helpful and useful in kind of bashing out loads of really concentrated, focused writing in little bursts of 25 minutes. The idea is that you set your timer for 25 minutes, you ignore all distractions for that amount of time, and then you can really focus and hone in on what you're doing for 25 minutes. It's actually a game changer. I have had so many solid bursts of productivity now doing this, and the joy of having like a separate little clock for it as well is that rather than kind of setting it on your phone and having your phone still next to you, you can just have the clock separately and then there's not that temptation to have a little scroll at the 10 minute mark or whatever. So this was just such a thoughtful gift. I was really, really touched by this. Um, and it's nice that he's kind of so supportive and wants to kind of help me concentrate on my writing as much as I can. I actually didn't mean for this to be a hint. <laughs> and when I say that, I'm genuinely being serious. I'm not saying like, oh, I didn't mean for you to buy this. Like I genuinely mentioned it because I was gonna buy this for myself. So this is a game for the Nintendo Switch. Um, this is the Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. I played the Lego Harry Potter games so much through lockdown. They were such a fun little escapism game for me through lockdown. I enjoyed them so much. They are so funny. We've already played quite a lot of this. It's actually an enormous game. There's so much to do. There's so many like mini quests and I am by no means a gamer like whatsoever. I, I'm crap at games and it's funny as well when we like play games together Adam does quite a lot of gaming. It's so funny how much quicker he is and so much more receptive to like what you're supposed to be doing and what you're on the lookout for and what all these bits mean and I'm just like collect the coins. Like my idea of fun is kind of just like wandering around as a little character and bashing things around and collecting as many coins as possible. Like that's all I'm looking for from a video game. But I'm currently completely addicted to this. My reading time is really suffering as a result of opening this gift. Um, but I'm having a blast while I'm playing it. So I highly recommend it if you have a Switch. The Lego games are so much fun and they might it might sound kind of very childish and silly but a, that's absolutely fine. Whatever brings you joy in this miserable world, <laughs> seize it with both hands. Um, but they're actually not kind of childish games at all. They're a little bit challenging and very, very funny. Um, and particularly if you love Star Wars, obviously. I think I'll do what my brother got for me um, because you've already seen one of them. You might have spotted this little mug that I'm drinking my coffee out of today, speaking of which. Kath Kidston actually released a little kind of mini Matilda collection about a month ago now, I think. It actually came out just before my birthday, so it was very good timing. You know when you get a new mug in your collection that becomes like your emotional support mug and it's the only one you ever reach for, it's the most like repetitive behavior that you have on a daily basis. <laughs> These are now all I ever drink out of. I'm completely obsessed with them. They're so, so cute. This one's got kind of like little Matilda doodles all over it. And then this one's got her reading books in lots of different like imaginary scenarios. So they are my lovely new little Matilda mugs, which I am worryingly obsessed with. I genuinely fear for my reaction if I ever drop one of these. And then to go with the mugs as well, which was a really lovely surprise. Um, he also bought me the little containers. They come in a little pair here and they've got the same matching pattern on them in this lovely blue and red style. The little Matilda illustration on them with the books, along with a really pretty floral pattern all the way around. And then the lids on them are this lovely kind of like cornflower blue color. Not microwave safe, but they are dishwasher safe. So they'd be really handy for like lunches to take to work. We'll definitely use them for leftovers. Although I feel like putting food in them is like not doing them justice. Maybe I'll use them to put like something nice in like embroidery threads or buttons and beads and sewing stuff. Let's do what I got from my mum next. This is a, this is pretty fancy. I feel a little bit uh, bougie opening this one. This is actually something that I saw when I went wandering around a couple of shops with her in Liverpool months and months ago. Um, I smelt this candle in the White Company 
told you it was fancy. And the White Company do a whole range of different things in this scent, which is called Seychelles. Um, and according to the box, it's bergamot, amber, and vanilla. To me, it smells like a tropical Solero. <laughs> if you want it in real person terms, I'm gonna say it smells like a Solero, but a posh Solero. My mum very kindly bought me the giant three wick candle in this scent. I feel like this is very fancy. I might have to save this one for burning only on special occasions. It's frankly enormous and so heavy. I'm gonna sum it up as like everything that is delicious about a beach holiday. It smells like that lovely sweet sun cream smell mixed with tropical ice cream but it's not too sweet. It's still got like a little sophisticated edge to it so that you would want your living room to be filled with that scent. And uh, this is now pretty much the fanciest thing in this house. <laughs> so if Adam dares to burn this when he's not supposed to. And the other thing that my mum picked up for me, I know a lot of you are gonna freak out about this as much as I did. Let me um, just introduce you to the Gilmore Girls cookbook. Yes, it really exists. Came out very recently. It's the official cookbook released by, I was gonna say the Gilmore Girls themselves. Uh, it's actually Titan Books. <laughs> close enough. Dishes from every corner of Stars Hollow and beyond, including the Dragonfly Inn, Weston's Bakery, Al's Pancake World, Luke's Diner, and Emily and Richard's Dinner Table. Fans will delight in recreating iconic dishes from the beloved series, such as Suki's Magic Risotto. Feels weird to say, I feel like I should say risotto, because that's how she says it. <laughs> I was actually thinking I might make a video to make the Santa burger. <laughs> Nothing like seasonal relevance on this channel. It's got this lovely gilded title on the front. It's got this really beautiful, um, like illustrated lining pages on the very front and the back. And I'll do a little close up so I can show you properly, but there's so much lovely photography. There's loads of quotes from the show to go alongside the recipes. And there's loads of funny things in here as well, which I just think are perfect for fans of the show. It, there's a whole article in here that's best ways to order takeout, reheat takeout, or bake frozen things, which is pretty much my level of cookery. Like my level of cookery is on a par with Lorelei. <laughs> so if you are a Gilmore Girls fan, or you've got a friend who's a Gilmore Girls fan, I can't think of a gift that they would love more. Um, and as a little bonus for me, I think, there could be some really fun videos for me to try and make some of these things and inevitably fail miserably and have to get takeaway instead for the full Gilmore Girls experience. <laughs> a lovely little surprise from Adam's parents in my birthday card. I found a book voucher, the Holy Grail. Not only is this a Waterstones gift card, but it is a good excuse for me to go and wander around a bookshop for a couple of hours. And yes, I might have technically put myself on a book buying ban until I read all the ones that featured in my last book haul, but a surprise book voucher, I feel like is the ultimate loophole. There's a couple of new titles that I've got my eye on, but if you have read anything, that's come out recently, any particular rave reviews that you think I would like, please let me know. Let me know how to spend my voucher wisely. Okay, let's do this next. Um, I've actually got <laughs> I've actually got this in the, the box that my fancy candle came in, um, but this is not more white company stuff. In fact, I can't think of a uh, something that the, the white company is less likely to sell. This was a really great surprise from my friend Emma. So this was a total surprise for her and so thoughtful. And I don't know where she found this, but she sent me the most amazing Bloody Mary kit. <laughs> I know they're quite divisive. Some people think they're the worst creation on earth, um, but they're my absolute ultimate. A good spicy Bloody Mary, there's nothing better in this world. Came with four cans of Big Tom, which is like a spicy tomato ready mix. It came with vodka. I've never heard of this vodka. It's called Mermaid Salt Vodka from the Isle of Wight in fancy little bottles. It came with <laughs> its very own Bloody Mary glass, which I actually don't have. Normally I have my Bloody Marys out of mason jars. So this is gonna make me feel like I've really got my life together at breakfast time. And then also some snacks to go with it. It came with fancy peanuts and dark chocolate popcorn. I'm not sure how well dark chocolate popcorn goes with Bloody Marys, but I will do the research. So that was the best surprise ever. I really was not expecting that because me and my friends kind of have a bit of a, a pact that we don't really do birthday presents anymore. So next time I've got something great to celebrate on a weekend morning, you know that I'll be sitting there with a delicious extra spicy Bloody Mary. <laughs> 
<laughs> You'll have to let me know how you feel about them. I feel like they're so divisive. Me and my friends are like hardcore fans. Um, but I know some people can't think of anything worse than what is effectively pizza base mix <laughs> in a in a glass with a straw and some celery. Can't think why. And the other lovely surprise that turned up, I think these actually turned up the day after my birthday, but that's just great because that extends out the birthday celebrations as long as possible. My friend Gemma got me these gorgeous dried flowers, which I've, I've kept in the, in the brown paper to show you up until this point, because I just think they look so like wholesome and authentic and farmer's markety wrapped up in brown paper like this. Um, dried flowers are such a gorgeous gift to send someone. Literally last for years and years and years. Um, and we, Oh, big fans of them. We've got them at Ver I'm trying to like think where we've got them. We've got some over here. We've got some up here. I got some in my office in the bedroom upstairs. Like we're big fans of dried flowers around here, mainly because you don't have to remember to look after them. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to find a lovely vase to put these in and somewhere nice around the house because they're so bright and I love the yellow tones of the orange, these little orange uh, little bunny tails here. They're so cute. I don't know why I just went to smell them. Obviously they, they don't smell like flowers. <laughs> they kind of smell like Hey. And the last two presents that I have got to show you uh, were from myself. <laughs> because if there's anything great about being 31, it's the fact that you can buy yourself birthday presents and no one can tell you nothing about it. That seems like a really good idea to me. Congratulations me on being born many moons ago. To me, love from me. Uh, I actually got two things, but one of them was a tiny thing that was in the sale. Um, that I had bookmarked and then the fact that it went in into the sale I was like well I consider that meant to be. It's this lovely little velvet hot water bottle it's quite like a posh fancy one and it says disco nap on it in gold embroidery with a disco ball and some stars. I just thought this was so cute. Once you get past 30 you do what you can for your back and your period pains and your joints and your quality of sleep and if that involves a fancy little hot water bottle with a cute slogan on the front. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, these are the birthday gift that I kind of treated myself to. I didn't wanna kind of offer them out as a birthday gift suggestion to anybody because they are a little bit of a, a little bit of a treat yourself moment. So I decided to offer them up to myself instead. <laughs> and funnily enough, I was more than happy to oblige. So these are a new pair of Converse. Um, I wear Converse on an almost daily basis. I literally live in them. So I feel very confident that I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of these. Um, but these are just so cool. So they're in this kind of off-white color. Um, they've got black piping detail on the sole. But the really cool thing about these is the embroidery detail that they have on them. So they have this lovely kind of sunburst stars and moon detail to them on one side and then on the other side with the Converse logo, they've got this little crystal ball on them that says future is bright. And I just thought these were, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think these are my perfect Converse. I love that they're still very neutral, but they've just got like this little very cute bit of detail to them. And then on the inside as well, they must be kind of star sign themed. I don't know whether they were part of a collection or something, um, but they've got all the different star signs written on the lining inside in lovely pastel colours. My black and white Converse are hanging together by a thread and I am of the opinion that Converse only get cooler with wear, um, but they are starting to kind of cross over the bridge of no return. <laughs> and in my life, I'm all about a subtle little touch of magic all over the place. And that includes my footwear. <laughs> so on that note, here's to 31. Um, so far, so good. No complaints so far. I am... Um, so grateful to my friends and family for all these lovely presents. So if any of you are watching, thank you. I have absolutely no idea what is in store until the next birthday, um, but I've got a good feeling about it and I am very excited to find out. So cheers for sticking with me for another birthday. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for watching this and hanging out with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed having a little look at what I got this year. I will see you very soon with another video. Take care, bye.